ഹൈ ഓൾ മൈ സെൽഫ് അരുൺ കുമാർ എം അസിസ്റ്റന്റ് പ്രൊഫസർ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് കമ്പ്യൂട്ടർ സയൻസ് ആൻഡ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ഇലാഹി കോളേജ് ഓഫ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജി ഡേ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് അബൌട്ട് ക്വാളിറ്റി ഓഫ് സർവീസ് ക്വാളിറ്റി ഓഫ് സർവീസ് റെഫേഴ്സ് ടു എനി ടെക്നോളജി ദാറ്റ് മാനേജേഴ്സ് ഡേറ്റ ട്രാഫിക് ടു റെഡ്യൂസ് ദ പാക്കറ്റ് ലോസ് ലെറ്റൻസി ആൻഡ് ജിറ്റർ ഓൺ ദ നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് the quality service is the important scenario that can be handled in a networking portion we can discuss in detail these are the flow characteristics uh, that should be coming under quality of service the important characteristics are the first one is reliability second one is jitter third one is delay and the final one is bandwidth we can see it in detail first thing is reliability reliability it is concerned with the ability of a network to carry out a desired operation according to its specification for example lack of reliability means uh, we are losing a packet of acknowledgement or we are sending some packet it will not uh, reach the destination Uh, so we are again sending the same packet so we can say that uh, we are lack of reliable we are lack of reliability so uh, sending the packet again and again it will be um, it will be actually uh, withdrawing the uh, packet it will be actually um, losing the uh, network quality so uh, losing a packet of acknowledgement or uh, we are getting any reply we are not getting any reply back will be forcefully sending the packet again and again and this property should be limited and this is the uh, portion coming under reliability for example we are sending some email or file transfer these are the examples of reliability next thing is jitter effect jitter effect uh, as in the previous video we already mentioned this term jitter jitter it is the variation in delay of packets we know that um, there should be some variation in delay of packets coming into the network or into a router uh, sometimes the delay will be low value then it is called a low jitter sometimes uh, the delay will be huge and then it is called high jitter for example if the packets are supposed to be p1 p2 p3 and p4 and we are taking the sending time sending time is of sending time of p1 p2 p3 and p4 are 0 1 2 and 3 and the receiving time is 20 21 22 and 23 then we are calculating the delay as we know that the receiving time minus the sending time receiving time of uh, packet p1 uh, minus the sending time is 20 minus 0 it is 20 so uh, similarly p2 is 21 minus 1 20 22 minus 2 20 24 minus uh, my, uh, 20 23 minus 3 is 20 these are constant delays actually these delays are constant delays so we can say that these are low jitter these are in low jitter okay the telephonic conversation is a example uh, scenario that may be happened in uh, low jitter effect uh, in telephonic conversation low jitter may happen but uh, high jitter may uh, distract the conversation of uh, telephonic and maybe uh, delay varied uh, delay varied to a high range uh, this 20 20 20 these are constant rates maybe 20 23 26 29 the jitter uh, delay may be varying varying to a high rate then it is called high jitter effect next thing is delay delay as we know that it is the amount of time required to transmit a packet when we are transmitting a packet it will be calculating the amount of time it should be transmitted uh, to a particular switch or router the time delay cannot be tolerated in audio conference as we all know that we are uh, doing some audio conference or video conference uh, something like that this delay may not be uh, happened because uh, this delay may Uh, lose the quality of audio conference or video conference so delay is an important scenario important uh, flow characteristics of quality of service 
last thing is bandwidth as we all know the bandwidth is the amount of information that can be transmitted over a network in a given amount of time we are providing some time and we are sending the information we are checking that uh, in a given amount of time how many amount of information uh, that should be uh, transmitted across a network for example the video conferencing conferencing itself we can take for video conferencing we need more bandwidth because uh, we are browsing everything uh, we are uh, the pixel rate is more and uh, we need to send the video in a high bandwidth rate for sending emails and all we need only less bandwidth so we have to coordinate we have to allocate the bandwidth based on the purpose if it is the high needed purpose like video conferencing we need more bandwidth if it is a email like purpose we need only less bandwidth so you should understand uh, this is one of the flow characteristics of uh, quality of service going into detail we need to know the techniques to improve the quality of service or techniques to achieve the quality of service there are some scenarios uh, that should be noted here the first thing is scheduling first thing is scheduling under scheduling we have some queuing techniques first one is called fifo queuing fifo queuing technique first uh, next one is priority queuing next one is weighted fare queuing the second thing is traffic shaping traffic shaping is more important uh, in the case of quality of service we have uh, normally using two types of algorithms there number one is called the leaky bucket algorithm number two is called token bucket algorithm then the remaining things are resource reservation and admission control we are looking into detail in the next slide the first thing is scheduling what do you mean by scheduling we know that the packets are trans, uh, transmitted to a network and it will be received it will be received or reached to a particular switch or router for processing a good scheduling technique treat the different flows in a fair and appropriate manner here so we need a scheduling technique uh, in order to allocate uh, the packets into a network or allocate some packets to router or um, types of switches in a proper manner so we need scheduling techniques the first type of scheduling is fifo scheduling that is first in first out queuing technique the packets wait in a buffer or queue we have a buffer or a queue here the packet waits here uh, until the node node here indicating that the node may be router or switch uh, this is ready to process them okay so we can check here the arrival of packet is coming here and if it is checking that uh, the queue is full or not if the queue is not full we can allocate the packet here and we can allocate the packet and queue it here if the queue is uh, almost full or full we can discard the packet okay then we can check that if the average arrival rate if the average arrival rate is greater than the average processing time processing time of the processor then we can say that new packets will not be well, sorry new packets will be discarded there is uh, no space in the queue or our um, router or switch is in busy condition so we can discard the packet if the average arrival rate is greater than average processing rate FIFO queuing is the default queuing technique in a particular network. Uh, normally, the FIFO is the queuing technique used in the network. That is the first scenario, FIFO queuing. Second thing is priority queuing. As we know, the FIFO queuing techniques, all the packets are allocated. If the queue is free, then we can transmit it. And in the case of priority queuing, uh, this is somewhat advanced than FIFO queuing. Here, the packets are assigned to a priority class okay we can use a classifier here when the packet packets are arrived in this classifier the classifier will classify the packets and give it to different types of priority queue each priority class has its own queue and the packets in the highest priority queue are processed first in this example we are using two queues in the uppermost queue is called higher priority queue and the lower lowermost queue is called the lower priority queue since the classifier is uh, checking that uh, what sort of packet is coming into a network if it is high priority then it will be redirecting it into 
high priority queue. If it is low priority, then it is redirecting it into low priority queue. So the switch uh, tends to the uh, tends to the queue when the current one is empty. So there is a switching technique here before the processor, and the switch is taken the packets from the high priority queue first. Then only it will be uh, giving priority to the low priority queue. So at the high end uh, priorities are processed first. Then only we can allocate the low end priority packets. The main problem uh, here we are uh, most probably uh, having some problem like the starvation. Starvation issue. Maybe the queue is empty. Then we can uh, cause some starvation here. So one of the problem of priority queuing. The third thing is weighted fair queuing. This is the advanced scenario. It is in this technique, as we know, the system process packets in each queue in a round robin fashion, with the number of packets selected from each queue based on corresponding weight here. Okay, we are putting some corresponding weight in each and every queue, like a round robin fashion, and uh, the packets are assigned to different classes here, different classes and admitted to different queues here. The lowermost here the weight is assigned as 1, here the weight is assigned as 2, here the weight is assigned as 3. The classifier classify the packets and given to the given to each and every queue. And the, uh, here the switch, uh, these three packets, the switch 3, uh, here the uh, foremost, the topmost one is uh, three packets from, uh, three packets are taken from the first queue and then it is turned to the second queue. Here the two packets are taken, then tends to third queue, that is one packets are taken. Okay, this cycle, this is cyclic process and the switch is managing all the thing. This switch is managing the cycle in a clockwise manner and it will be rotating uh, this space uh, until the queue is empty. And it will be given to the processor for departure. This is a scenario uh, happening under weighted fair queuing. And the second type of uh, is second type of technique is traffic shaping technique. That is, traffic shaping is most important mechanism uh, to control the amount and rate of traffic sent to a network. And we can we should be in control of the amount of flow of data. And there are two techniques that to be used in traffic shaping. The first one is called the leaky bucket, and the second one is called token bucket. The first leaky bucket algorithm, basically chunks are stored in the bucket and sent out of an average rate. We have a scenario like, the leaky bucket algorithm says that the first figure is indicating that there is a faucet here and the faucet is flow, um, allocating some water, allocating some, allotting some water to this bucket and this is a leaky bucket, there is a hole under the bucket and this is a leaky bucket bucket and the bursty traffic, bursty nature of water is coming into the bucket and it will be coming out water dropout of the hole at a constant rate only. Only drop by drop water should be uh, flowing out of the bucket here. Similar scenario in the case of networking. That is a leaky bucket with the packets. Here the water is coming. Here we are uh, call it as packets. So the host computer is sending some packets in a regulated way or unregulated way. It may be the base T traffic here. The base T packets are sending into the network the bucket hold the packet here we can assume some buckets is here and that bucket hold the packet and uh, out of the network out of the packet out of the bucket it should be in a regulated flow only okay we can send the uh, packets in a regulated manner only one by one or in a, uh, some time of interval we can send the packets something like uh, we can send the packet to the network so this sort of algorithm is actually called leaky bucket algorithm this is an important scenario that is uh, happening in the uh, traffic shaping okay so here the input rate varies but the output remain constant here similarly the network can smooth out the bursty traffic in case of leaky bucket strategy so this is the first type of uh, traffic first type of traffic shaping happened in uh, quality of service the second thing is token bucket token bucket is actually some interesting scenario we are allotting allocating we are allotting or allocating some token uh, tokens for every every bit of time that is token bucket takes into account 
the idle time that is uh, the case happening in the case of leaky bucket uh, the leaky bucket does not taken into account the idle host there is no such idle host in the um, center side and if a host is not sending for a while it bucket becomes empty in the case of leaky bucket but in this case the token bucket uh, takes into account the idle time it is handling the idle time of the host and with each clock tick the tokens are added to the bucket and when the data needs to be sent it collects token from bucket and then send the data packet consisting of data equal to the number of tokens the example we can say this is the token bucket there is a uh, there is a clock we are allocating here one token added per tick added per unit time one token is allocating into this bucket okay and we are using this token for sending the packet uh, so all the packets are arrived in the uh, queue if the network is not full queue is not full we can allocating the packets here and we are providing this packet uh, to the corresponding network with by the use of this token one token removed and discarded per cell transmitted each and every cell is transmitted each and every packet is transmitted to the processor one token is using so one token is removed or discarded from the bucket in like that way we can transmit it, uh, every packets by the use of this token here okay you can remember that in the previous case if the host has bursty data uh, leaky bucket allows only the average rate and in this case the by the use of token we can send um, n number of data uh, to the output network the third thing is resource reservation resource reservation is nothing but we need to resource we need to reserve some uh, resources for uh, the packet to hold that is in the case of um, a router or switch the router is always checking for uh, the uh, checking the flow of data that is uh, the resource is allocated or not for a particular packet and a flow of data needs resources such as buffer bandwidth cpu time and so on this much fact is uh, the router need to check and in quality of service can be improved if these resources are reserved beforehand beforehand okay it should be reserved earlier then only uh, the packet should be in a safe zone or or the packet should be allocated to each and every resources in a proper manner so resource allocation or resource reservation is an important scenario and the last thing is as we know in admission control strategy admission control is nothing but it refers to the mechanism used by a router or a switch to accept or reject a flow based packet okay some predefined parameters are there and these parameters are okay then we can admit the packet or assign the packet to a particular network before a router accept a flow of accept a flow of processing it check the flow flow specification in terms of bandwidth buffer size cpu speed etc if any of the uh, specification is missing if any of the specification is uh, not up to the mark uh, then the packet should be rejected then in this scenario in this type of uh, scenario should be followed in the traffic nature so this is also one of the key feature uh, key feature of uh, key feature to improve the quality of service so you should uh, learn this uh, sort of things thank you so much and uh, this is the quality of service and uh, how to improve the quality of service using some algorithms and uh, this is uh, what about uh, things happening uh, quality of service area thank you so much